Hey, good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity. Pastor Tim here and Pastor Katie and I are both delighted that you were able to join us for worship this morning. In case you've somehow missed it, we want to remind you again that we are in addition to this online means of worshiping God together. We're also now gathering outside, outdoors at church, live each Sunday at 9 a.m. And you're welcome to come and join us. Come and, and uh, use our canopy that's up for shade along with your lawn chairs. Bring those along. Or you can just, again, pull into the parking lot and tune into the FM station where our service is broadcast or roll down your windows, listen to the PA, whatever works for you. Well, just a reminder, we'd love to see you this Sunday. If you're on the lawn, we are requiring folks to mask and to practice physical distancing, but we're all used to that now, right? So plan accordingly. And again, if you're still in that high-risk category, we want to encourage you to worship either online or in your vehicle. Either way, know that you're very much still valued and part of our worshiping community. We're missing you big time. This Sunday, we also hope to add Holy Communion to our service. And so again, hopefully uh, that's something you can look forward to in future weeks if you can't be with us physically this week. But whether it's live or recorded or online, it's, it's all again our gift to God. And so it's our hope today that in this worship, it either might challenge or comfort you as the need may be today, and remind you that you are indeed a beloved and forgiven child of God. So let's now center ourselves, shall we? Doing so with just a moment of quiet, a deep breath perhaps, and ready ourselves to offer up our gifts today, prayer and praise to our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. And as we do, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's now join an opening song together as we lift up our praise to God. Let us pray. 
Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Katie, and this is my beloved Gus. We're going to share a message today, our children's message. Let's see if we can get Gus to even pay attention. Ready? Here we go. The Parable of the Mustard Seed. Jesus was talking to a crowd one day. They were listening to him. He tapped his chin and said, How can I describe the family of God to you? Hmm, he said, I believe that God's family is like a mustard seed, Jesus told the people. But a mustard seed? Well, they're tiny, said the crowd. Jesus scooped up some round black seeds from the ground and rolled them around in his palm. And then he said, when they grow, the mustard seeds turn into the largest, strongest plants around. Even birds, put, even birds put their nests in the branches. The crowd was starting to nod. They were getting it. It starts out small, but the tiny seeds grow into something great. He stepped back to show a full-grown mustard bush as tall as two people. God's family may have started out small, but each time someone shows or tells others about the love of God, it grows. My beloved Gus. When we first got Gus, he was a runaway. We didn't get to see him as a tiny little puppy. Instead, we got to see him at a time when he was in crisis. He didn't own any family and no family owned him. He had some habits that weren't so great. He barked a lot, but he also just looked like he had fear in his eyes all the time. But look at him now. Gus has grown into this mighty dog that loves us and protects us always. The seed is small, the seed of hope, the seed where God says, I'm with you always. And then the bush, the mighty bush that protects us all, that shows us love, that reminds us that God is with us is indeed the bush. I mean, just knowing that this is what the kingdom of God is like. But we also have to do that thing called the journey between the seed and the bush. God is with us in that time, and sometimes it can be really difficult. When Gus was little, we had to teach him how to eat food out of a bowl. We had to teach him that he could count on us. And then pretty soon we left him home alone. We had to learn how to trust him and set him up for success. Moms and dads right now, our grandmas and grandpas, are really worried about our kiddos right now. To go to school, not to go to school. How can we keep you safe? How can we keep you away from this COVID? But also, how can we be in school together with dignity? How can we also not forget what's going on in the world around us, not only just illness, but how are we growing as people? How are we counting on each other? How are we showing one another love and compassion? Moms and dads, God is with you. Our friends, let's just remember that as God dwells with us, something mighty is gonna grow. And we're gonna be able to count on God's love now and always. The kingdom is like a tiny seed of hope that grows and grows until it is mighty. And in that mightiness, we know God's love. I'm gonna invite you this week to pause, to find a place where you can, as a family, find peace. And each evening, end your day, your worries, your frustrations, with confidence, that God always dwells with us now and always in a mighty way. Let's pray. When I pray, I like to fold my hands because we're talking with God. And then I bow my head because what we're saying is important. It's to our creator. And then I close my eyes. So I'm not looking around, but I'm listening to the words. Let's pray together. Will you pray with me? Repeat after me, please. Dear God, thank you for loving us, for giving us forever. We pray this in all things in your name, Jesus Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. The scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 13. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. 
Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. Word of God, word of life. Hello, I'm Pastor Katie. It's good to spend this time together. Hey, let's pause. Put all the distractions aside and just fully give God our undivided attention. And before we do that, let's, let's just breathe in breathe out and let's pray together listening for God will you join me in prayer please O oh God of all creation we give you thanks for this is indeed the day that you have made for us and as we spend our energies throughout this day taking on the daily tasks or as we spend our energies wondering about the days ahead we ask that you dwell with us assure us comfort us have mercy upon us. Lord, we are your children of all ages. We are children of all different identities, yet together we are exhausted. We are uncertain. We are angry. We are injured. We are sick. We are in need of your healing. We are fearful. We are unkind. And we are hurting from the unkindness and the lack of decency by one another. Lord, bring us your peace. Give us your strength to breathe the air in and out with the assurance that you are always with us. Thank you for your patience that goes beyond our own understanding. Thank you for loving us first, loving us always, inspiring, commanding us to love one another. We pray all these things in the name of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When I was in seminary, I was taking this class on preaching. The class was online. See, we met three or four times a week, and we had our own version back in the day of what would be known now as Zoom or Google Meet. We could see each other during our class, except for our sermons. Now, our sermons we had to record in front of our family and friends, and then we had to send them in to the seminary, and then they would upload them so our fellow students could not only watch them, but they could critique them and grade them. I still remember the first day we were eager to please. I mean, this professor, we wanted so to impress him. So we were all getting ready to take out notes and what everything he said. And he said this, he said, get out your scripture that you were going to preach on. Then he walked around to the front of the table and he leaned on it, just kind of sat down on front of it. And he said, now I want everyone to write down What's your big idea? We all wrote down something, some key words. I'm sure we wrote down some pithy little statement of what we were going to say. And as soon as we got done and we were ready to share, he asked one more question of us. He said, looking at your paper, what do you think God, what's God's big idea for your listeners to hear today? And in hearing, they will share. In listening to our gospel today, I believe that we do indeed hear God's big idea for God's people, for you and for me. Let's look into our scripture. Jesus is teaching. And as he's teaching, he's in the thick of his ministry and he's walking along with the people and the disciples. And, and all of a sudden he stops and he picks up a hand of dirt and he looks at the little seeds inside and says, see, 
The kingdom of heaven is like this, these tiny little seeds that when you put these little mustard seeds into the ground, they will grow into big bushes, so big that birds will make their nests in these bushes. And then he goes on and he talks about faith and how the kingdom of God is like someone making bread. and The kingdom of God is like the treasure that someone finds. The kingdom of God is like... What do you think his big idea was? And what do you and I need to hear today as his message of hope? What are we longing to share? Maybe big, God's big idea for you and I this week is hearing God say, I am with you always. I'm with you in a God-sized way. I'm with you in your knowns and your unknowns, in your fears and your hurts, in your biggest decisions and your daily tasks. I'm in your dancing for joy and celebrations, and I am here to weep with you. I am here to dry your tears from your cheek. I am with you. Maybe you and I need to envision Jesus sitting right near us with us here and now, just like he sat with his people then. I want us to imagine Jesus trying to get their attention, maybe trying to get your and my attention, scoops up the seeds and tells them, have hope, have hope. This tiny message of hope will grow and grow beyond your imagination. He continues on and then he says, after it's all done, hey disciples, hey people of God, do you understand what I'm saying? And they answer, well, of course we do. I wonder if Jesus asked me today or asked you today, would we answer, well, of course I do. Or maybe I know I might freeze and have test anxiety and say, well, let's get back to our passage. Jesus is in the thick of his ministry trying to get the people to understand what it means to have a trusting and loving relationship with a merciful God. He's trying to have the people then and you and I understand, to comprehend what, that we have a role in this journey of faith. Not to be bystanders, but to be fully present, to be fully engaged in God's mission of hope, to trust in God's provision, to trust in God's mercy, to trust in God, and to encourage, inspire others to do so as well. How are things going in your household? Maybe that question deserves a pause. How are things going? If Jesus invited you to take a walk right now, would you go along? And if you were on that walk and Jesus suddenly stopped and showed you a handful of seeds and said, trust God's love is just like these teeny tiny seeds that will grow into a mighty bush. Would you have the energy to trust, to believe in his message? How about this? Would you be willing to put those tiny seeds in the ground, to water them, to nurture them, to care for them, to tend of them day after day so that each seed would grow into a mighty bush? so that birds could nest in these bushes? Would you be willing to work so hard and trust so much that you would give your heart to this message of hope, this mission to grow faith, not only in yourself, but so that others could see and dwell in your message, your example? I feel we are all a bit overwhelmed. Maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I invite you to think about it as well. I, I'm overwhelmed by the news of communities that are in chaos, so angry with one another. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by schools that are attempting to make plans, only to have plans redone and changed again and again. I'm overwhelmed alongside of families who are uncertain what to do or where to turn for advice. I'm overwhelmed by even in my own household, a college student longing to return to campus only to know that administration at their best is hinting that the time away from home may not last 
throughout the entire semester? Or are you overwhelmed trying to keep your job or look for a new one? Trying to stay healthy or are you caring for someone who is fragile or in need of God's healing power? What is the big idea you need to hear from Jesus today? Jesus speaks and says, this hope will grow inside and it produces greater hope in others that will go beyond their imagination. He tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure and that we are God's treasure, that we are God's beloved and that we can trust and know that you and I are indeed God's own children, beloved. Is this what you're longing to hear today? Sure. We could dissect this passage. We could revisit it. We could listen to it time and time again. But I wonder what would happen if we trusted it to be true. The words of Jesus. In the gospel, we hear this message of hope. Paul writes many years later in the book of Romans. He says this, he says, I want you to hear this message of hope. And he speaks to the people. I believe this message is a standalone message for you and I to hear today. It comes from the passage, or from the translation, the message. I invite you to listen. Give it your undivided attention. In Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 26, we hear, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of wordless sighs and aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked out into something good. God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the onset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lives as the life of his son. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original an intended shape of our lives there in him. After God made that decision of what his people should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then, after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition, exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? Who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's own chosen? Who would dare to point a finger, the one who has died for us, who has raised uh, us to life, is now in the presence of God and at this very moment is sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in the scriptures. They killed us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases Jesus because he loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, unthinkable or unthinkable, Nothing, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. 
Word of God, Word of life. This is God's message of hope. It is in the book of Romans and speaks for us here today. Nothing will separate us. See, Jesus taught us from tiny things, mighty things will grow. That is our hope in trusting God. And then Paul writes, when your hope feels belittled, when your hope is, seems unknown, there is God and God dwells with you and nothing, even your greatest questions, your greatest fears, your greatest unknowns, nothing we do can separate us from God. For God has promised to dwell with us in a God-sized message of hope, love, mercy, now and always, in the now, not yet message that God says, I'm with you now and there is more to come. There is heaven. See, heaven is like. Heaven is like trusting God to be God. We teach our confirmation students all the time. God's job, be God. Our God, job, trust God. In our passage today, we breathe in and breathe out this message of hope, God dwelling with God's people. Nothing shall separate us yesterday, today, or tomorrow from the mercy, the grace, the good news in Jesus Christ. We are God's beloved now and always. This is a message worth sharing. This is a message worth telling your neighbors, your friends. This is a message to believe is truth. Jesus speaks. We listen. In listening, we hear. And in hearing, we share. Would you pray with me, please? O oh God of all creation, we give you thanks for indeed this is your message of hope. May we trust it to be true. May we trust that you love us. In the week to come, as more decisions are yet to be made, as our world continues to show more anger and fear, as there is a greater need now and always for a cure, Lord, dwell with your people. Make yourself known to us. May your glory be known to all people. May we have hope. And may it grow in us. Beyond our imagination. Through you. Lord, we pray all these things. Giving thanks that you love us first. Love us always. Command. Inspire encourage and dwell with us as we continue to learn how to love one another. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now as we recall both our own need for God and the needs of our neighbors near and far, let's pray for the whole church in Jesus Christ, shall we? For the whole world and for each of us according to our needs. Join me in prayer. Imaginative God, your world and your kingdom are revealed to us in everyday ordinary things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net, a simple gesture of care. Help your church today witness to the surprising and yet oh so common ways that you encounter us on our daily walk. And when your word is open, Lord, it yields light and hope and understanding. Increase our appreciation for and awe for your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers today trying to address COVID-19 and dilemmas of our environment. Treasuring the earth and our neighbors, Lord, may each of us live as grateful and as healing caretakers of all that you have entrusted to us. And Father, raise up just and wise advocates today and judges from small town courts to 
international tribunals enlighten all leaders to discern what is right and to do what is good. And Jesus guide the work of our synod in this season of discernment and needed leadership. As voting members gather next week in assembly to elect a new synodical bishop, inspire their efforts and their prayer, their decision making, that it might be the most faithful it can be. Walk with the members of our city council too this week as they listen carefully to the needs and experiences of citizens throughout our community. And Holy Spirit, we also ask your presence with teachers and administrators, with legislators and parents as we together seek answers to dilemmas to education this fall. We ask that you give each of them patience and listening, courage and sensitivity to the needs of all the least in our midst. And we pray for those God today who might still be suffering in isolation, for those who may be staffing care centers and the patients that they tend to, for those who are hospitalized or quarantined, those struggling today with brokenness of body or mind or spirit in one respect or another, including all those that we name before you now, whether out loud or in our hearts. We might once again feel your presence alongside them in their respective dilemmas. And God, just lifting up all the many petitions that each of us may only be bold enough to utter in the quiet of our hearts at this time. Whatever our longing, whatever our need, gracious God, hear these our prayers. Receive them for the sake of the crucified and the risen one. Hear us again as we pray the prayer you taught your first disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In a world still so very hungry for Christ's peace, it's important for us to remember that Jesus stood among those first disciples and offered them his peace. He said, peace be with you. May we take a moment now to share a sign of God's peace with those who we're blessed to gather in the midst of today.
Hey, thanks again for being part of our worship this morning. Now indeed, as we go forth out into the world, as we're sent forth from this place of worship today, may the Lord bless and keep and encourage and embolden you to see how you and us together can be the hands and the feet and the voice of Christ at work in North Liberty and our corner of God's creation this week. Please visit our website, meanwhile, to know and learn about all the things that are going on as those evolve over the course of this week and this month. Uh, again, know that our prayers are with you, and we appreciate your prayers for us and our staff, too, as we, we do the work of Christ in our place, in our way as well. Now let's go in peace, shall we? To love and to live and to share Christ.